Hello guys, today on Rising Farmers is harvesting and drying of cocoa. Have you been wondering where we get our chocolate from? Majority of the chocolate that we consume comes from cocoa. Cocoa is an evergreen tree grown in the tropics for eat beans or seeds. Cocoa beans are primarily used in the production of chocolate, cocoa powder and cocoa butter for consumption. Cocoa is the chief agricultural export of Ghana and Ghana's main cash crop. Ghana is the second largest cocoa exporter in the world after Ivory Coast. Ghana's cocoa cultivation is noted within the developing world to be one of the most modern commodities and valuables. After four years of maturity, cocoa tree produces fruit in the form of elongated pods. It may yield up to 70 such fruits annually. The pods or cherries range in color from bright yellow to deep purple. In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the harvesting activities that take place in cocoa production, basically harvesting, fermentation, drying and processing. Harvesting Cocoa can be harvested with many tools such as the go-to hair or even with the catalyst used for weeding. The location of the fruit will determine the type of tool to be used for harvesting. The season to harvest the cocoa pods arrives at dry period, around 6 months after the bloom and lasts from 10 to 14 days between May and July and then from October to March. It is important to find the maturity peak of the pod as this will determine the sugar concentration of the mucilage and the content of butter in the seed. The optimal point of ripeness is detected with the color of the pot. In this video, you can see that majority of the fruit are deep yellow in ripening. The cocoa fruit changes in color as it ripens. The fruits or cocoa pods are harvested when they reach physiological maturity. That is, they have a large amount of sugars already formed. The next stage after harvesting is the breaking of pots. With the use of a knife, the cocoa pots are break to remove the beans from it. <laughs> After removing the seeds from the pods, the next stage is fermentation. The beans removed from the pods with their surrounding pulp are accumulated in leaf covered heaps in leaf lined holes dug in the ground. Banana or plantain leaves are mostly used in Ghana during fermentation. Beans with their pulp are fermented for 1 to 7 days, depending on the type and grade. During fermentation, the juicy sweetings of the pulp are drained away. The germ in the seed is killed by the increased heat and flavor development begins. When the beans are well fermented, they must be dried. Cocoa beans may be dried in the sun. Sun drying is a common traditional practice, especially for smallholder farmers, because it is significantly cheaper than artificial drying. The cocoa beans are spread 
in mats in a relatively thin layer and are turned or rigged for even drying. All unwanted particles or substances such as debris are removed during the process of drying. should be dried over five to seven day period. This allows acids in the cocoa to evaporate and produce a low acid, high cocoa favorite products. If drying takes place longer than seven days, mold contamination can occur and this will lead to downgrading of the cocoa and buyer will pay less for it. Nevertheless, the duration during which the beans are dried is very important. If the beans dry too quickly, some of the chemical reactions that started in the fermentation process are interrupted, thereby making the beans taste acidic or bitter. If the drying is too slow, the beans can develop fungus during the storage and off flavors can develop inside the beans. During the drying process, the beans lose nearly all of their moisture and half of their weight. Ideally, a dried beans should have 70% moisture content for the export market. The sun drying of cocoa involves a very low level technical influence and hence can be constructed easily. The sun drying method of cocoa is reported to be optimal for producing the best flavor in fermented cocoa beans. This is due to the low temperature and sufficient drying time for cocoa to dry even which leads to chocolate flavor development. It is always important to remove debris, broken beans, and all unwanted particles within the cocoa beans during the drying process. A well dried cocoa beans will rattle, and at this point, the beans are ready for bagging, weighing, and export. Breeding, testing, and all other processes that need to be done take place from here for us to get our chocolate and other cocoa products. So this is the basic level of cocoa harvesting, fermentation and drying. Thank you for watching our video and we hope to share more with you. Don't forget to like, share and add your comment to this video session. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to go in the effort.